Hey guys, Ron here, and last year I made two videos where I reviewed some of the fake mon that you guys submitted to me on Twitter. The point was to be super honest about my opinions, and I tried my best to give you guys helpful critiques so that my fellow fake mon artists could grow. At the end of the day, the reception of these artists was unanimously polite and positive, even when I was wrong, because they knew that my opinions came from a place of love. I was proud of how polite you guys were, so I asked my followers to submit fake mon for me to critique once more. There are like 400 submissions, so I'm gonna look at like 25 and try my best to think of what can make some of these designs a bit better or outline why some of these designs are already amazing. Let me know if you enjoyed this so I can make part 4 and make sure to subscribe and follow me on Twitter. But again, part 4 only will happen if this video is well received like last time. But before we begin, please make sure to at least save in another tab the videos I just released like the one where I made Pikachu clone evolutions and the four artists video where I made I think my favorite Pokemon I've ever made. So go check them out when you're done with this one. We're starting off pretty strong, honestly, <laughs> with Kaijumon's Pokemon. So these are starters, right? Yeah, definitely. As Pokemon, they're literally perfect in terms of rendering, art style, concept, and design. It's there. There's literally no nothing wrong with any of them. But when they're starters, they, ha they have some criteria and precedent that they have to follow. Of course, there are always exceptions and anything I'm going to say in this video, there's always going to be an exception, but the exceptions are always conscious and on purpose. You know, they're done for a reason by Game Freak. So if something goes against the quote unquote rules, totally fine as long as that's the whole point. But for example, while this is a perfect Toucan Pokemon, grass starters need to be way more explicitly grass type all starters have to be explicitly the type that they are yes you have pokemon like rallet where yes it's not majority green but the green accent is the only accent while here you have multiple different accents you have red you have orange it's kind of hard to tell what type this pokemon is same with this this is hard to tell that it's fire type i guess maybe some kind of fire motif whether it be like not a literal flame on the head but the fur looking like a flame or in the shape of a flame because this could easily be like just a ground type, you know, a brown sloth, because sloths are brown. <laughs> so, um, but again, this is a perfect sloth design. These are re all really good. I think the water, the, the calf is perfect. A water calf looks amazing. Starters are really hard to nail. These are like 90% there. Mine, the ones that I made like a long time ago, they're like 20% there. I would change a lot, so you are way ahead of me when it comes to starters. All right, Dark and Windy's fake mon. Honestly, this is a really good progression. Uh, originally, I was looking at it, I'm like, these are too similar, but the whole point of the the spice kind of extruding, kind of looking like barbed wire, honestly, looks very nice. Um, the only critique would be that the proportions are too similar to real snakes. I don't think there are any snake Pokemon where the head isn't bigger than the average snake, or like even maybe Ekans is the only one that's close to this, but even Ekans is thicker than the average snake. I'm talking about just the girth <laughs> of the snakes are never this skinny and long. It could exist. There could be a snake Pokemon look exactly, that looks exactly like this in the future, but it looks too similar to an actual snake's proportions for it to feel like a Pokemon. You have all this detail in the head. That's also a problem that you don't want to uh, face where you have too much detail in a small part of the body, and that's why making the head bigger would help. And this is too literal of a thing. Um, when you have a concept like, okay, a chair octopus, you could do it. That's clever. You're gonna have to find a way to make it naturally look like a part of the body while the different elements of this Pokemon look separate. But again, Dark and Windy is probably the, one of the best in terms of rendering it like an actual fake mon. Like the lines and shading are perfect. Dark Sylvania, one of the most underrated ones online. This is a great concept. I've, we need kids in a trench coat Pokemon, and this is a perfect progression. This is that definitely the progression that Game Freak would do in an evolution. I'd question whether or not this looks too much like actual clothes. There's no reason to think that this is an actual, this is not an actual hat, you know? Like this, it looks more natural because it's like all compact and part of maybe this just simple accents on this Pokemon head. But there are dark types like Ponyard that are just a thing that aren't, that aren't an animal or anything. This works. I don't want to just try to find critiques just for the sake of critiquing. It's really clever and cool and very much conveys Jack the Ripper because it really does look British. Very Victorian. I would like to hear more of the Pokemon's backstory so I would understand how it works in the world because how could you have three different Pokemon inside a trench coat? How does that work biologically? I don't know. Zimli is one of the best around. This Pokemon is a bit too stylized in terms of it doesn't look like it fits Pokemon's art style. It's a perfect design, beautiful colors, beautiful. The proportions are definitely Pokemon-like. It just looks like it's more like Western 
than Pokemon usually does. Like it's just an original character that could exist outside of Pokemon, like a Sona. <laughs> I mean, I'm looking at the description right now and it's literally saying that this is a combination of Olms and a Sona that Zimli created. So I guess that's the problem. Sometimes people create like create Pokemon that feel like a like a persona. But that's not a problem design-wise. Design-wise is literally perfect. But honestly, it's more animalistic than, let's say, a toxicity. Like, the shape language is amazing. And the proportions are also really good. This batch is too strong. We need some designs that aren't 10 out of 10s. But they keep on coming. Meliao's starter set, again, are just really strong. Very unconventional for the colors. They're very muted. Throughout my time on the internet, I've seen this design. It's perfect. Uh, this is a really good water bear, tardigrade kind of... Fake mon, and it works as a starter. I've always wanted a water tardigrade starter, and this one's just perfect. And as a fire type, see, this is clearly a fire type, even though the colors are not as fiery as the average fire type. Por the personalities between each starter is completely different and distinct, which is really good. A coconut milk octopus. I just realized this is an octopus, and it's based on the whole things, you know, where octopus hide inside coconut shells. This is actually, this is actually genius. Now that I think, I was gonna critique this the most, but this is actually genius. I guess my the only problem would it's less the individual Pokemon, but you have two starters that are very like muted, like they're just white or like very light colors. Like this one, unconventional color wise, but still works as a water type and a starter maybe, but like they're both very light. So like when you see this group as a whole, their colors aren't that iconic because every starter group, if I had to show you their colors, like their color scheme, it's easy to tell these what these Pokemon are. While these, it would be what white, brown and green, which is I guess Rowlet's color scheme. But then you have like peach, pink and and black so the color schemes i think is what would need to be changed but honestly after looking at this for more than three minutes this is some of my favorite fake mon uh starters i've ever seen now art lock made this armor stone pokemon that can basically roll into a ball that looks like different evolutionary stones it's a genius concept and as a design again an art wise this is this is really good there's no critiques art wise I guess the only difference is that yes this is a really cool gimmick but you want just the normal form just to, to at least be strong on its own there's nothing wrong with it it's just that if i just saw the the normal non-rolled up version of this pokemon it's kind of uh unremarkable i guess try to make the normal form stand out as well because if i saw this in the wild i'd be like yeah cool rock armadillo but you literally have the power to change it for the better like you're an you're a great artist sega master girl has this amazing line of pokemon that she made for like the contest for the Maza region and like the final evolution is amazing i think like there's literally no flaw with the final evolution and it's you, if this was in the game you'd be like wow that's a cool pokemon i want to use it um the progression is nice too i if if you actually want to critique like some nitpicks it would be that there's too much negative space for this one i would make the body smaller that way like for example see the body of this of the the first form is literally bigger in terms of like silhouette than the evolved form and when you see the designs together this just looks like a f another form of this it doesn't look like an evolution i would say just make it smaller and cuter in terms of the body it could be the same concept of this little floaty ghosty thing and i would just make this also a little bit smaller too that way it doesn't look just like a less tall version of the evolved form because right now the evolved form just looks like this this pokemon but with longer legs and outstretched arms a little bit more compact maybe even stubbier legs because when it evolves the concept is the literal exact same thing it just stretches out its arms so at least make the body a bit more compact and then make this one more of like a ball <laughs> like this one should be more of like a chick a floating ghost chick because this looks even more menacing than the evolve form honestly but those were all nitpicks because i mean every artist is gonna have a different perspective on this it's not like i'm objectively right when it comes to these it's more just hey it won't, won't hurt to consider what i said whoa okay i like Wow, Scraffle. All right, these are really good designs. And the concept itself is so cool of having uh, the rocks come out in such a layout, in such a way. The literal only problem is that there's just too much detail, too many lines. You have, you see every individual rock in there, every individual pile of dirt, every individual spot on it. Never do that in a Pokemon design. The concept, like literally the silhouette, the concept, the, the shapes don't change anything. The colors, even the colors. For the pre-evolved form, bigger head remove one of the neck stripes perfect evolution way less spikes look you have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen eighteen rock spikes just on the head 
half that, or at least combine them into bigger shapes. There are too many small individual shapes here. You may have that as a texture, like Golem, for example, has individual plates. When it comes to fur, at least in the older generations, not in any generation past generation three, you don't have that much uh, spiky fur, for example. I get it if it's fur, but if it's rocks, those are individual solid things. That's too many shapes. You don't need any of these neck spikes here, honestly. And combine this rock into just two rocks, two segments. It can't be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, segments just in the in the foot you know you can when i say you can't i'm not the art director of pokemon you can do whatever you want and pokemon may do this in generation 11. amazing design though i would love this now this is genius <laughs> having a rubber hose flamingo makes sense usually when you have a, a pokemon based on some kind of cartoony concept it won't work but you picked an animal that already has the cartoony rubber hose proportions so it, it's it's a it's a clever combination of two concepts that's the kind of concept you want in a pokemon where the two separate concepts that don't have anything to do with each other actually do make sense when you combine them and then when it evolves it becomes colorful a clever concept and really good execution honestly now we have flowerdar's final evolution these are amazing designs the art is really good and there's always gonna be a but the but is there's too much detail my guy these these look like uh, mega evolutions for the starters perhaps or like even legendary versions these could work for legendaries even for a legendary this is a little too much going on you have so many individual aspects and details you even have the claw marks you have the the flowy leaves you have the different kinds of leaves you have the vine lasso you have the buds you have the spikes you have you gotta pick one you it, it for a, if you're designing a character outside of Pokemon, yeah, this is a cool little bear guy. Little, it's not little. Why did I say little? <laughs> I mean, you can keep the claw marks. That's a neat detail, I guess. You're going to have to keep one of these. I'd say the buds and the spikes have to go. We get it. It's dangerous. You don't need the the, the thorns on the, on the vine. Unless the entire vine is thorny, you remove the buds, add thorns to this part of the vine too. Add thorns on this vine too instead of these leaves. I think this extra pink is also unnecessary. Uh, in, in Pokemon designs, you don't have a lot of designs. Again, there are exceptions, but you don't have a lot of designs where you have two very similar colors when there's already so many colors on the Pokemon. You're not going to want pink and then magenta. You don't want like, like this one works because you have purple and you have light purple and dark purple, two different shades of purple, but that's okay because there aren't that many colors on here. It's just light purple, purple, white, and black. Makes sense. Same thing here. Light blue, blue, but then the only other colors are yellow and white. But then for this, you have brown, light brown, green, this kind of red that's close to this kind of pink. You actually have three different kinds of browns now that I realize. Taking away these pink spots and the buds would help. These leaves around this trunk, why are they there? That's not even how leaves work. They would not be on the trunk unless it's moss. That does not look like moss. That looks like actual, like a bush. That would be off of a branch. Same things here. You don't need the spikes on the knuckles. This one's the best. Really good execution of what you're going for. I mean, there is Skeledurge. And what's funny is that Skeledurge goes against the whole thing that I was saying with too many colors, because Skeledurge does have a lot of colors. But that's the whole point. It's like, that was part of the concept. I'm sure the concept of this isn't that there are a lot of different details and colors. The point of Skeledurge is the Dile de, de los Muertos. That's the aesthetic of Dia de los Muertos. At the end of the day, the point really is, if you want to add a lot of details, there should at least be a reason. And all the de details on this one, while you know it may be slightly over-designed, they all make sense. I can't say I can take out any of the details because they're very intrinsic to the concept. While you don't need the spikes on the knuckles here, you know? While this is kind of the opposite <laughs> in terms of the problem, Again, very cute and really nice art, but it's literally just a manatee. I don't think there's any other concept that I can see. It makes me happy, but I'd add some element, at least visually, that makes it a Pokemon. Because <laughs> this could be a cartoon manatee from anything. When you have a non-Pokemon concept with a non-Pokemon art style, what's Pokemon about it, you know? Indominus art, fun character, but again, most people prefer Pokemon where you can easily imagine every single individual Pokemon of this species having a distinct personality and doing their own thing while this looks like a character, an OC. I tend to make a lot of my Pokemon characters, but I still try to make them look somewhat like species. I mean, this could be a mythical, so there's maybe only one of it, but that's not the main problem. The main problem really is just the, there are too many details in small locations. So you see, look, you'll have empty space here, empty space here, which is like, this is a good amount of space, empty space, but then you'll have so much detail here. You have different shapes and colors here, small details that you can't, you can barely see at first glance on the neck and on the head and very stylized mouth that 
looks like a mouth from other franchises. It's not like a mouth that Pokemon would do. Yes, Pokemon would do a smiley mouth like that, like let's say Gengar or something, but not in this fashion. This harkens too much to uh, other franchises and their st how they stylize their mouths. Like that seems to be the number one problem with a lot of designs. While well, again, this concept and the art is getting there, you have all these different spots that are just unnecessary. You can convey the fact that this Pokemon has spots or, or even scales by just like a few of that. You don't have to add it to every single aspect. Even the line, even the, the stick has it. And then the wood has its individual lines that represents wood to make it look like bark. When Pokemon does it, the lines are very are used sparingly and they're big lines that are that wrap around. They're not small details. They're visible. Every detail has to be visible. Even in Torterra, for example, the lines are there to represent different shapes that the tree has. They're not there to be details. They're not there to be like, oh, I need to make it look like bark. The lines are there because this is a separate root in the tree. They don't represent small individual lines, you know, that bark has. Problem isn't that it's, it has scales. The problem is that they're t small individual afterthoughts that were added as details. It should be a very visible part of the concept unless it, you know, changes forms and then, you know, shows a secret about it. <laughs> but these are, if you do these details, you got to commit. But again, Tyrantrum is a final evolution. More details make sense. This is very much the first stage of, the, of, of this line and it shouldn't even have these proportions. It should be smaller. This looks like a middle stage. Then you have this neglected chick Pokemon that evolves into a spoiled bird. Love the concept. And I like the personality too. And the shapes of the lines are also really good. But again, too much detail. Look at all these cracks. Compared to, you know, other egg Pokemon, like perhaps Execute, one crack per egg, multiple for the one that's that's like very messed up. Even let's say Volibi, two cracks. Well, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and uh, way more, basically. <laughs> and each crack is also not just a line, it's lines that branch off. It's too cracky. Same thing with here, you have a lot of different spots and even still cracks in small areas. You see you have too many details here in this small location. Probably the thing I'm most confident in not doing in a Pokemon. But again, I'm sure there's an exception somewhere. Here we have a classic example of a very cool line with really great progression, but something's a little off that makes it not as amazing as it could be, even though the art is amazing itself. But since Matt asked politely <laughs> when it comes to improving the design, here are some nitpicks, basically. For the pre-evolved form, I'd say just make the forehead slightly bigger. That makes every Pokemon cuter whenever you make the forehead bigger. So move the eyes down, make the forehead bigger, point the nose up. It looks cuter when the nose is up and more full of life. Smaller body too. See, I know that it gets long, so this already represents the fact that this Pokemon will get long and dragon-like. I mean, it is a dragon. This one, the horn looks drooping. I, again, make the horn face up. The top of the hair should be a little higher. The line should be a little higher and with like the swoop a little higher like there. And again, slightly less long. Notice how the colors are basically the same as it evolves. It gets slightly darker. I'd make it a little bit more extreme where it starts like this. There should be more differentiation between these two colors. If you see in the evolve form, these are very close. I'd say make this darker or more vibrant and this is slightly lighter. More contrast between these two greens. I love the green, a little bit more contrast between the greens because it's basically just green and white. These are too similar for it to be considered different colors. This is just a darker version of this color. There should be a evolution of the colors as well. You can keep the color, you can make the colors this similar across the evolutions when the concept is different each one, but the concept is literally the same as it evolves. It's literally just ba kid, teenager, adult. The concept is just getting longer and more mature. So when you do that, at least make the colors change. And you know what I just realized? This is a steel type. I do not notice steel because these plates, they look lo more like scales instead of like armored plates. When it evolved and gained the steel type, the colors are the exact same thing. The, the, the shapes are of the, of the plates are also the exact same. There's the addition of the steel type was not expressed in any way. Maybe it got slightly less saturated. So it's grayer. Pokemon don't have to be explicitly their type, but when a Pokemon changes type, and I'm not saying add armor to this thing, it already has enough detail. I think it's straddling the line of just the right amount of detail. All the critiques that I'm telling you, you can easily change. You know how to do it. Autumn Raptors designs here are so beautiful. This is a good example of how to do multiple shades of the same color in one design. Because again, that's the point here. It's not like it's an afterthought. The whole design and color scheme hinges on these uh, quote unquote gradients of the colors and the different shades of these colors are part of the concept. So it's definitely allowed. 
there's also a progression in the proportions, limbs, and concept. So that's how you would do an evolutionary line, at least ideally for me. Like, I like this kind of progression in an evolutionary line. This is a really good fossil Pokemon. See, this is how you do cracks. Just one crack is enough. Even on the head, just one crack, even when it evolves, two cracks, you know? Shade these babies up and you got, like, some of the best fake Pokemon around. Honestly, even though I, you can say, oh, this is too much detail, the whole concept is this is a Lovecraftian kind of Pokemon. So the point is that it's just too much. And that's when you're allowed to do it, when that's the point. It's almost like an Ultra Beast here. When it comes to evolution of colors, there's an evolution of colors as well as it evolves. It's not just the same exact color. But that I only do that when there's enough difference in the designs and shapes of the evolution then i will keep the colors sometimes like i did that recently with my dragon food pseudo legendaries sprites are definitely okay and that's a good style to choose from because it helps you simplify the pokemon especially when you do it in gen 5 style i think gen 5 pokemon have the right amount of detail because they were made to be in sprites but they're really like detailed sprites so these are really good starters i'd say the proportions of some of them are this is like they honestly all three of them look like middle stages because you see this one looks a little bit awkward this one's longer this one also has smaller head and proportions than the average uh first stage like a piplup for per se so these are really good middle stages especially with the darker colors like they all have relatively dark colors for first stage starters they're fantastic designs they look exactly like what pokemon look like they have all the tropes of middle stage starters and maybe they are but that's the point that you'll notice throughout the entire video which is like a lot of these are just really good fake mon. They are just not perfect for whatever niche Pokemon they are supposed to be. Like maybe you made a starter Pokemon that looks like a legendary. Maybe you made a pseudo legendary that looks too simple. You never know. These aren't even mistakes really. At the end of the day, these are all really good pieces of art. And there are way too many to fit into one video. So please leave a like and subscribe to let me know that you want to see a part four. Go check out my other fake mon videos. And obviously check out all the featured artists in this video for yourself. Look at the description for all the cool things that I have. Like the music I use, the t-shirts I made for you guys, my Patreon where you can get cool rewards like seeing my videos days early. Which you can also do by clicking the join button. I'll see you guys very soon.